Sports in the news again. You got cancel culture, you got wokeness, and you've got the return of some professional athletics. All things that I wanted to get to today. And because, as you all know, I am not exactly Mr. Professional Sports, we're bringing somebody who is Boston radio legend and host of his own podcast. Now, Jerry Callahan from the Boston area joins us once again. Jerry, good to have you back. Hey, Buck. Good to be with you, my friend. So, you know, I've been given Drew Brees. A hard time. Who and I feel that Drew Brees seems like a great American. What he said was patriotic. Producer Mark tells me he's one of the best QBs, perhaps of yes. all time, yes. and he seems like a really good dude. And he's now apologized. I don't know if we're up to fifteen or twenty apologies or what it is today. But his wife is apologizing in the groveling. Now, is this just because the guy, if he wants to continue to be in the NFL, he's got no choice? And what do you make of this? I well. It was very disappointing because he didn't. I mean, let's start with this, uh, Buck. He didn't say anything offensive. He didn't say anything for which he should have to apologize. I mean, yep. he just said he kind of gave his stock answer to the question about players kneeling. You know, he doesn't kneel. He loves his country. He respects his grandfathers who fought in, the, in World War II. So he didn't say anything wrong. I mean, it just wasn't woke enough in this day and age. So they came after him. And you're right, man. He's a been above reproach. I think the number that he, the money's given to a charity in New Orleans is like 30, 35 million. He's got an impeccable record. Just one of the best stand up guys, family guy, you know, good Christian man. And they came after him hard. The reason he started apologizing, I think, is the teammates. You know, he's got some really important teammates that he couldn't lose Alvin Kamara, the running back, Michael Thomas, uh, uh, Malcolm Jenkins. These guys were upset. I think he could have survived if, you know, other guys or media people were, were uh, mad at him. He, he could have lived with that, but he had to reconcile with the teammates, and he did. And as you know, I mean, once you apologize, they, you know, it's not like they stopped coming at you. He, they kept coming. And he, I, I think you might not get this, but maybe producer Mark will. It, he, it, he reached a new low. He actually had to make a personal phone call to Shannon Sharp who's one of the biggest clowns on, on TV, and had to call him and uh, apologize to him personally because Shannon Sharp thought Drew Brees should have been kicked out of the league for what he said. So that's you know, yeah, and it's, you're right. The it's, wife it's t- apologized, the kids, I mean, the whole, the whole family's apologized. It's tough with, tough with Drew Brees. You know, I mean, he has an immaculate record. Some guys don't trust an immaculate record. I do, though, Jerry, because I have an immaculate record, so there's that. <laughs> and, and I, I want to also just get your take on – Roger Goodell and the fact that now he seems to be endorsing, you know, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. I mentioned at the top of the show, the far left Supreme Court justice icon to the left has said, no, kneeling during the anthem is, is disrespectful. Actually, <laughs> she said this. I was actually pretty surprised, but I guess she figures, you know, what are they really going to do to her? Right. So just, they I'm need sure. they need her more than any. They need her more than any NFL player. They need her more than any any sports league. And they know that. So they're not going to do anything. But, you know, you got Goodell now coming forward and saying that effectively, you know, kneeling is great. Go ahead and kneel during the anthem. I, I think if people do this, Jerry, the NFL could be in trouble. I mean, look, I'm not going to watch after they kneel. I'm not going to do it. Well, the NFL can survive anything. I mean, the NFL is the only sport, the only league that really matters. I mean, let's be honest. The NBA guys are going to do it. LeBron's going to wear his I Can't Breathe t-shirt. They're going to be kneeling and in protest. And baseball, you know, who cares? Someone will kneel, I'm sure. Football, all eyes will be on football. It'll start in September, and there'll be guys kneeling, I mean, on every team, on, you know, every week. It's going to be a big deal. Trump will go at them. Goodell will have to defend them. Um I think it's gotten kind of scary for, for Goodell because if you saw that video in audio, I think you played it, where he is groveling. He's not on his knees, but he's close. And he's apologizing for the way he handled it in the past and apologizing for you know, past sins for the league. And I'm telling you, look, he's thinking about taking a knee himself. He he feels that you know, threatened, intimidated by the you know Kaepernick movement that I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if one week he got on the field, held hands with some players, and took a knee. Then you will see, you know, a real division among fans. And, and, and you know, it'll be Trump on one side. It'll be, you know, Kaepernick on the other. And it'll be it, it, like it was three years ago times, you know, 100. It's going to get wild. We're speaking to Jerry Callahan. 
of Boston radio fame and also now host of the Jerry Callahan podcast, which you should all listen to. Highly endorsed by producer Mark, I might add. Producer Mark, big fan, Jerry. So sure. I, I, I wanted to, uh, oh no, for real. Uh, I wanted to uh, also get your take here on just sports journalism in general. Right now, the New York Times has gone on this, this wokeness purge and they got rid of their op-ed editor. And, and, and we look at this, and, and I've been saying for a while that journalism, people need to just understand that these are warring propaganda factions, really, and right. it's almost all dominated by the left, and there's very little that's allowed to give an alternative point of view. But then I, I have some friends, I know some people, I keep it quiet, that I know in the, in the ESPN and, and Fox Sports worlds, and it sounds like they're also, like, like wokeness, if you can't be Drew Brees and speak honestly about patriotism and respect for the flag i got to assume a sports journalist who wants to keep his job at espn or her job is going to have to say that's right we're all kneeling now yes I, I, you, you couldn't be more right it's i mean espn is the most woke place it, it, I mean, it's worse than you know msnbc espn they you know, they they had kaepernick's back three years ago and they have doubled down now they will be, uh, I mean, they were criticizing Breeze. Any player, I mean, you're not going to hear any player speak honestly on this subject or any subject going forward after they saw what they did to Breeze. I mean, nobody's safe. You will not hear any guys talk about, you know, loving their country. Or, right, yeah. You know, if Drew Brees can't do it, I'm assuming that the third string tight end or whatever yeah. is probably not going to be, <laughs> he's not going to be making a big thing of it. No, and I'm telling you, this is a message to them, and you're right. I mean, we know journalism's dead. I've heard you, and I've said it too. This is, I think, as, as clear a sign as anything the, when they get rid of the editorial page editor at the New York Times for running a column by a sitting U.S. senator, Harvard grad, and uh, war hero. Can't have any of that, so they get rid of him, and that's, again, sending the message to everybody. But you're going to see ESPN has a bunch of shows, a bunch of hosts who think – you know that, that all the players should kneel. That you know all cops are are, are bad, and uh, you know and, and and they hate the evil orange man as much as anybody. So I think you're going to see a lot of that. <laughs> yeah, that that is absolutely for sure. Speaking of Jerry Callahan, check out his podcast, guys, the Jerry Callahan Show, where he talks about a whole range of issues: politics, sports, culture, you name it. Um, just just give me some updates here, Jerry. You know, because I do want. I, I, we don't have time to get into the lockdowns really right now. I've been a big critic of the uh, across the board lockdown approach and just the lack of transparency and honesty and, and now what we see with the, the protests can end social distancing but you know fu uh, funerals couldn't for loved ones and everything else so we've seen all the hypocrisy and all the craziness but in a, i do want sports to come back one for entertainment value for myself but also just in general it feels like that's a big sign of normalcy for the country right. uh where, where are we right now with nba and nhl and, and the nfl where where are they in terms of coming uh, back when and that's a good question. They're all still negotiating. Baseball looks like the one that's in trouble. They have not agreed, you know, the prorated salaries and the union has dug in their heels. And I think it's, it's baseball is going to take the biggest hit. It was already struggling. It was already losing, losing eyeballs and, and, and kids weren't really interested. I think it's going to take the biggest hit. The NBA, I don't know what they're doing. They're talking about playing now until October and then stopping and starting again in I don't know, January or something. It's all, uh, I, I don't know, it's all being negotiated as we speak. But as I said before, I feel like football, if football starts on time, fuck like college and pro, you're right. That is such a sign of we're back to, you know, this is America and we're back to doing what we do, you know, watching football. In, and, and I think they'll do it with, I mean, I've been saying it for a couple of months, doing it with uh, crowds of, I don't know, 20,000 maybe, 25 in a 75 seat state. 75,000 seat stadium, something like that, just as, you know, it to show that they that they care about social distancing, but they but they really don't. And right. I think the Trump rally is going to be the first sign that, you know, countries roaring back whenever that is later this month. And then, you know, when football camp begins at the end of July, beginning of August will be another good sign. And uh, I just before I let you go, Jerry, I, I used to watch a lot of the NBA and. I used to go to a lot of Knicks games here here in New York, but it was back in the 90s, and I've watched this show that I've been recommending to everybody. It's actually an ESPN docu uh, documentary on the. It's called The Last Dance about the yeah. about the Bulls in the 90s and that team. Was basketball just 
uh, was was the NBA just a better league then with better stories, or do you, you know is, is that is that just nostalgia talking for mine? Because I, I feel like today no. the NBA it's like a three point shooting contest where everyone's six foot ten and nobody cares what team they play for, and it just feels like it's it's just not a good product to me. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I mean, you know, how, how do you how do you gauge now versus then back in the nineties with the Bulls, the Knicks, the Pistons, etc. And the well, Celtics me, don't want to leave Larry me, Bird out. The Celtics, Lakers, you know, in the 80s, yeah. was, that was the heyday. That was the greatest. You know, Bird, Magic, rivalry. You know, that was when the NBA was at its best. And then along came the Pistons and then the Bulls and Jordan. And I was sitting right there. I saw myself in the uh, last dance when Jordan scored 63 in his second year in a, play- a first-round playoff game against the Celtics. It was the most amazing performance I've ever seen by anybody. But, you know, they, they got swept. You know, Bird and the Celtics swept them. So... Those were the glory days. I'm with you. Not only does it feel like a three-point shooting contest where you know everyone makes the playoffs and that kind of thing, and but I'm telling you, back to the you know the story of the day, back to the you know the woke culture. The NBA is the wokest league, and you got guys like you know LeBron and Steve Kerr and and Popovich who just hate Trump, and you know these are guys that will you know uh, uh, LeBron said that the police were hunting him uh, hunting black men when they leave their houses. Yeah, a deeply it, irresponsible thing to say, a reckless. It just, it, just idiotic thing, and that you know that doesn't help. I think there are a lot of people that, that say, screw him, especially when they know LeBron is afraid to criticize China. At the same time, it was the same day, I believe, but the same day that he ripped um, uh, the uh, Drew Brees, same day he ripped Drew Brees and anyone who criticized Kaepernick, that the day that China outlawed any criticism of their anthem uh, yep. and and not a word from LeBron, not a word. Yeah. All right, everybody. Jerry Callahan, the man himself. You heard him. Check him out. His podcast, the Jerry Callahan show. And uh, Jerry, great to have uh, some Boston flavor in the show, my friend. Thanks so much for, uh, for showing up. We appreciate it. Good to be with you, Buck. Thanks for uh, having me. CrossFit looks like it is now canceled. I saw this one popping on social media, which is where so much of this now happens. Uh, you will recall that there was a big backlash against uh, against the one of the primary stakeholders in SoulCycle, which is a very expensive stationary bike class that I will admit to having done one time in my life, and it was sheer misery, and I hated every second of it. Um, but that was for just supporting Trump. Somebody was, in fact, uh, yeah, they were just upset that there was a Trump supporter that was a large owner. And now you have a whole bunch of problems with CrossFit. Reebok, this was today, Reebok has ended, um, uh, Reebok has ended partnership with CrossFit. Remember, CrossFit we think of as a style of workout, but it also is a, is a company and a brand. Um, here we go. After CrossFit CEO Greg Glassman made an insensitive remark about George Floyd on Twitter yesterday, Reebok has ended its partnership, um, and there's other people that are pulling out. Everyone's all really upset. And here, here's what I think is so interesting about this. The Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation, that was the outfit at Washington University that put out the the numbers that we were all supposed to believe on how bad things were going to get with COVID-19 and how if you didn't listen to them, huge numbers of people were going to die and all this stuff, right? The Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation, um, which was completely wrong and, and really catastrophically wrong in its predictions about how many people are going to die and everything else from COVID-19, is clearly politicized, folks, because they've come out with a statement. Remember, they were pushing, oh, my gosh, we're all going to die from COVID-19. Hide under your bed. That was the IHME modeling that was used, and that's what happened. And then we have these massive protests all over. We're told that social distancing is so necessary because otherwise you're going to spread the disease everywhere. That's what they tell us, even outside, even outdoors. And the IHME put out a tweet on June 4th. Racism and discrimination are critical public health issues that demand an urgent response wherever they occur. Racism is a public health issue. Oh, I'm sorry. Have a hundred have a hundred thousand people died from racism in the last 90 days. If so, please explain how. And please explain what we're supposed to do about this. Once you've explained how, which is, I think, the first major hurdle that no one can do, then explain how we're supposed to fix that. 
Oh, no, that's right. Race. These people are so brainwashed. The left is so insane that even their health experts are saying, well, I mean, there's a pandemic that's we told you killing so many people that we have to take away all of your rights and lock you in your homes. But if people want to fight against racism, that's OK. Then you can go out, mix in the public uh, sphere, you know, cough on each other, everything. That's fine. More important, more important. These, they, I, I will never trust these public health frauds again, and I haven't trusted them in weeks anyway. But this is spitting in the faces of every person who has lost a job because of the lockdown, who could not go to a funeral because of the lockdown, spitting in their faces of all the kids that haven't been able to go to school, aren't going to school, can't go to camp all summer because of social distancing. But fighting racism is so important. That's what they say. Important enough that people should die. They are telling you that that anti-racism protests that are really just about mobilization of the left against Trump, as we know, but anti quote, ra- quote, anti-racism protests are important enough that huge numbers of people should be risking their lives based on what they were telling us even weeks ago about the lethality and virality of covid-19. Now, Greg Glassman, the CEO of Cross, CrossFit, responded to the IHME uh, here. It's. It's Floyd 19. And they're all and, and they're oh, I'm so racist. OK, now you could say that that's insensitive, uh, certainly to the George Floyd family. And this guy died, was killed by a cop. But the point that I think he was trying to get at here is not really about George Floyd or about it's just about how the IHME. Which put out a hashtag Black Lives Matter tweet. And, and is being used for the numbers to justify all the COVID policy, thinks we're all morons and that we should forget about what we've been told for months and the pain and the suffering that the entire country has suffered through because of their numbers. They were the primary source for metrics funded by Bill Gates. Folks, I'm sorry. This is unacceptable. I'm not going to let this go. They have been so dishonest this whole thing was such a scam they are such frauds oh yeah now social distancing doesn't matter because of the of the protests are you kidding me remember protests to go to your job or to keep your livelihood up and running or to have basic day-to-day rights of movement and speech and remember protests weren't allowed before that's not allowed you can't protest in favor of that but protesting in favor of ending racism we have already we've already had a black lives matter movement what did it make better how did it improve minority communities we've already been we've been through this they burned down neighborhoods there were riots they did this in st louis they did this in baltimore they did this in other places there were huge black lives matter protests through new york city what was better afterwards What changed? What improved? Nothing. But nothing, if you're a leftist, if you're a Democrat, is worth now risking lives and risking your professional credibility and reputation in order to support the agenda of Pelosi and Schumer. It's almost roll call time, but first I just want to say, hold your wild stallions, everybody, because we got some news for you. And I had no idea when I brought this up yesterday on the show that this, I swear, this is just, it's something, there was some synchronicity here. There was, uh, it was fate, because while I'm, while I'm giving producer Mark a hard time for being a young whippersnapper millennial, unlike a, a gray-bearded, gravitas-full uh, millennial like myself, because we are technically both millennials, which I like to remind him of. But I'm the old man millennial, the, the grouchy. Well, he's grouchy. But I'm the old man millennial with the gray beard, and he's a young millennial. He has not seen some of the true classics of really the, what, what's the generation below? Gen Y, right? The Gen Y classics. And that included Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. And now, in case he needed any more reason to see it, they are coming out with a third Bill and Ted movie. Here is some of excellent. Here's some of the trailer. 25 years ago, you played a concert in front of the entire world. One month ago, you played in Barso, California for 40 people, most of whom were there for $2 taco night. Bill and Ted, what have you got to say for yourselves? Be excellent to each other. 
Party on, dudes. There we go. Producer Mark, come on. Now you've got a third Bill and Ted's movie waiting for you. Now, but can I go to a movie theater and watch it? How is that going to work? I don't know. It might uh, be like a direct. Uh, like I think all movie point. theaters are going to be out of business after this. <laughs> it's a fair point. I think this might be a, a direct to, um, you know, a direct to your home kind of situation. But I'm pretty sure you could watch Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. I'm sure they have it on demand or something. And, you know, and it's been 25 years. So it's amazing how old that movie is. I didn't even realize. It's really the, uh, I think it is the second movie Keanu Reeves made. Have you seen, see, now I'm in a Keanu zone. I'm assuming you've seen all the Matrix movies because you're a civilized person, uh, sure. even though the third Matrix movie was total trash. But I'm assuming you've also seen the series with Keanu Reeves known, I'm forgetting what it's called, on air, what is it called, where he plays like the gun slinger? Huh? Come on. You know what I'm talking about. Is this uh, 24? No, no, no. Oh, my gosh. Good heavens, man. That's a great series, though. Good heavens. I can't. I'm, I'm blanking on the uh, on the Keanu Reeves right now. It, I'm, you know, I'm, my, my brothers make fun of me because I've always been partial to Keanu. Um, and, you know, he's he's a good actor. And I think he does a good job in what he does. I mean, Point Break is clearly one of the great the great classics of John Wick. There we go. You've seen John Wick, right? No. Hmm. Interesting. Well, let's uh, let's add that to your list. And let's also get to roll call because I'm going to stop making demands of producer Mark's time with movies. Hit it. It's time for roll call. All righty. It is time for roll call. Producer Mark, are we getting some good voicemails coming in for Friday, by the way? I want everyone to get excited about that one. Yeah, of course. They're coming in. I haven't listened to them yet, but they're coming okay. in. All right. All right. I'll take it. Facebook.com slash Buck Sexton. Speaking of my name. BuckSexton.com, your one-stop shop for all things Freedom Hut. And we should actually set up a shop on there. I'll talk to the folks about that. we got to do that, too. But, uh, yes, indeed. Things to talk about, things to discuss. And, uh, oh, Team Buck at iHeartMedia.com if you want to send us an email. Um, for some reason, the, the, the crazy libs are coming at me on Instagram. Well, that's where I get a lot, of the, a lot of the mean messages. Less of it on Facebook, a lot more. I don't know what it is, but the really mean psychos out there seem to come at you on Instagram now. Well, I don't know I'll, what that's a, I'll enlighten what? you a little bit. Instagram uh, tends to skew a bit younger than Facebook does. Ew. Ew. That's probably why then. Although Team Buck Youth is awesome, but unfortunately they're not, every, they're not all the youth. <laughs> that's for sure. Not every not everybody agrees with what the Buckster tells them. Um, let's get to it. Len, first up here. Buck, love to have you guys move to Florida. It's a state of freedom and liberty. Forget Austin. Far left yuppies, social justice idiots, and environmentalists. Whew, ouch. I don't know, KLBJ Austin. Florida's calling you out right now. Florida's calling out my, my Austin peeps. I think Austin might have to make some jokes about Florida man now. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say. All right, so you better write in from KL, KLBJ World. Anyway, I'd love to see everyone get together and start marching to protest the continued wearing of masks and closed venues of all types. Since there is no law that says you have to wear the mask everywhere and restaurant and bar owners can open and just post a sign, no masks required, patronize at your own risk. The cops can't arrest, uh, arrest everyone, and in New York, they'll let you out anyway. Um, in New York, they're saying it is an executive order. I don't know if that would really stand up in court, but I do know that right now we are told that you must you must comply with the mask face covering stuff. Uh, you do not have an option if you're a business. And yeah, that's where that's where it is. So, but yes, I would like to see ma I'd like to see mask noncompliance for certainly outdoor face mask wearing. And I think if you're unless you're in a high risk category indoors, too, it's going to say it. I don't understand how many cases of this virus are even out there right now that people are so worried about there's 320 million of us all righty uh where are we now michael hey buck remember europe was mostly peaceful in the 1940s and the u.s was mostly peaceful in the first half of the 1860s shields high and no bended knees well michael that's a pretty uh, intense pretty intense political series of political comparisons you're making there my friend i i don't think we're heading for really really the really really bad stuff i'll say that i think we'll be all right i don't know i like to be an optimist i like to be an optimist dennis 
Oh my gosh, Buck, don't know if I should laugh or cry over this crazy defund the police narrative. Your description of it being destructive, stupid, and maniacal is absolutely spot on. So how bizarre or maybe just plain scary is it that people actually believe that it's somehow a solution to something? If they believe that it's such a good and workable idea, then here's a crazy thought for them. Why don't they just promote the idea of outlawing criminals? Makes sense that if we don't have criminals, then by all means, we don't need law enforcement. Thanks, as always, for the great show. Yeah, Dennis, this is what I say. It's like having marches to outlaw cruelty or meanness. Cruelty is bad. Racism is bad. But if you have a march to outlaw it or, or rather to, to just oppose it, OK, how, though? The how matters a whole lot. There is universal agreement on immoral things being or on things that are clearly immoral being bad. But if you want to take policy action, you have to describe what it is. And I'm telling you, I'm seeing this with a lot of the stuff with uh, with cops right now. You know, all the major police departments are just waiting for an opportunity. Any cop that's a little a little too rough. And I don't, I don't mean anyone dying or anything terrible like that. I just mean anyone's a little too rough with a protester. The, the, they're going to take your badge they'll take your job and, and maybe prosecute you for that now. OK, so people are then think of the impunity with which the more violent protesters, the rioters are able to act against law enforcement in that circumstance. Just saying it's a bad, bad situation. Uh, bad situation. Let's see here. Jay. Hey, Buck and Mark. Love the show. You guys were asking for a KLBJ listener. Here we go. To chime in on relocation to Austin. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, I didn't even know this was coming up. This is pretty funny. Austin is the bluest, most liberal city in our state. We have self-proclaimed socialists on our city council. I wear a uniform for a public safety entity and am, and am employed by the city. So unfortunately, these bozos make decisions regarding my job. Wow. Jay from, from uh, KLBJ Austin land. That is not a ringing endorsement. Oh, there's more. Also, the crime has increased as well as homelessness. We're just another Seattle, essentially. Texas is awesome, however. I would recommend College Station as a better city to move to. Just a couple hours south of Austin, home to Texas A&M University, land of God-fearing, gun-toting conservatives. Thanks, guys, and shields high. Hmm. How many people live in, how many people live in College Station? I mean, I, I don't know. I, I've heard of College Station. Producer Mark, do you know anything about it? You know about, you know about sports. I mean, if I had to take a guess, it'd be a college town, so there's uh, good more call. people well there. Done, during well, good analysis, Producer Mark. Well, I no, like I'm just saying this probably, it's probably a lull during the summer around Christmas time when all the students go home. Yeah, 100, about 100,000 in population, and Austin population-wise, let me see what it says here. Austin, Texas population is ooh, almost a million. It's a lot bigger. Mm. What's the uh, population of Delray Beach, Florida? <laughs> That's a good question. Let's do this. Producer Mark and Buck are thinking about where they're going to relocate. Delray Beach. By, by, by the way, if you want, dude, if you want to move the Freedom Hut down there, we're going to have that conversation. Seventy thousand. I, I, I nice. got no problems with. It. I love Delray Beach. I got no problems with that. Uh, I'm trying to think of where else we have. Maybe what is is San Antonio a great city? Uh, what about San Antonio? They have an one NBA point, team. Almost 1.5 million. You could root for the Spurs. Huh. The Admiral, David Robinson. I remember some things. That's who you remember? Yeah. Not and, the uh, dynasty. Tim Duncan. Yeah. Manu Ginobili, Tony Parker. Yeah, all those guys. Yeah. All those guys. The Spurs. Uh, Greg Popovich, who's busy this week crying. Greg Popovich is like, I'm so sorry for my whiteness. That's what Greg Popovich is out there saying. Oh, boy. Sad. Very sad. Um, OK, well, we'll have to think about Austin. That's uh, that was I was not expecting that one. All right. Next up here is Greg. Hey, Buck, want to just make a couple quick points. First, here in Denver, they are keeping public pools closed, most likely for the rest of the summer because they can't abide by social distancing rules while at the same time allowing mass close-quarter gatherings for the protests. And second, the people in England vandalizing the Churchill statue must not realize that there probably wouldn't be a UK today without him. The insanity of all this is pushing me to the brink. Conservatives absolutely need to rally and put a stop to this nonsense. Shields high. Well, Greg, uh, thanks for the update on uh, 93.7 Den- 93. FM in Denver. 
That's right. The Freedom Hut, Freedom 93.7 FM. It's a match made in heaven. And as for uh, keeping the pools closed, that's just nuts, man. They're doing it here in New York, too. They're doing it in New York. So you can, you can mix with, you know, three or 4,000 people shoulder to shoulder in the streets for six hours at a time, breathing on each other, touch, you know, bumping into each other and everything else. Uh, but you can't go for a swim in open air in a public pool. They're not going to allow that because of COVID. These people are completely insane, but it's very tough to get them to admit that. Michael, Buck, your Dr. Fauci impression cracks me up, but I miss your Warren Wilhelm as Angela Merkel. Can we get a little more Warren Wilhelm? Shields high from Austin. Michael Shaw, guten tag, ja. But we were just told that uh, Austin is like a left-wing socialist uh, naughty place. So why is it, where, where are we going to move into Texas? Angela Merkel wants to know. She does not have a good answer for you. I'm not sure yet. But do some Mark likes Delray Beach, because Delray Beach has very delicious drinks as well as a beach where you can uh, lie out in the sun. No? Nine. Why not? Sounds like fun to me. I think, I think Delray Beach is maybe, maybe the spot. You're close to Palm Beach, so if you want to be fancy, you can always go there. And I hear good things about West Palm. I think Bongino is, uh, he's in Florida somewhere. I don't know where he, he's, he's somewhere down in yeah, Palm I Beach I think area. him and Rush are down there. Yeah, I think, well, yeah, Rush is down Palm Beach. I think Bongino's Palm Beach area, too. So, you know, just saying. Those guys know what's up. Uh, Edgar. Hey, Buck, love your show. We love you, Edgar. Where can I find accurate statistics about death rates related to police actions? I would like to be able to talk intelligently about the subject using actual data. Edgar, um, death rates using poli- uh, about police actions. Uh, you can find the Washington Post is keeping a running running tally. I haven't looked and I haven't really spent much time diving into whether there is any uh, question about how they use those or how they pull those numbers together or anything else. But it's pretty detailed from what I understand. So the Washington Post is actually keeping a running number of, of people who are killed by law enforcement. It's a, I think it's a little under a thousand people a year killed by law enforcement in this country. But that includes people who pull a gun and start shooting at cops. Right. So that's why you, when you look at the number of people that are killed who weren't doing anything at all or who are un, or I shouldn't even say at all necessarily it depends on the case, the specific case. But people who were not actively attacking cops with a lethal weapon, you get down under 100 very quickly. So, yep. Um, let's see here. That's that's my best answer for you on that one. And Michael, it is only fitting that you bring up the Baltimore police, but the Baltimore. Uh, but the oh, sorry, the BS. Whoops. Had another effect that people need to be reminded of. They could any police officer that could walked, leaving those behind with such a depleted force. It was ineffectual for quite a while and still not functioning well today, though they do the best job they can. Yeah, I am. I'm not surprised to hear this. I'm not surprised at all um, that. Well, no, I mean, I actually knew this about Baltimore, but to be reminded of it, I appreciate. Uh, Yeah, Baltimore was in very, uh, very bad shape for and still is. in. I mean, you go to Baltimore and it's. It's pretty astounding how uh, how people just accept a degree of criminality on the streets. That's that's what just what just happens. Um, So anyway, it's uh, yeah, that's that's what's going on there. Trying to pull something else up here. Here we go. Ryan writes, Buck, my wife and I returned from France uh, uh, last year. We had our baby soon thereafter, had a variety of free hours and pockets of me time. I suppose they find the uh, care. Anyway, the Buck Sexton show has been the most edifying and entertaining piece of political perspective and necessity that has graced my early season of fatherhood. Now I'm fully dialed in as someone that has spent extensive time overseas. Your dedication to research and conviction to administering truth has been easily connecting and trustworthy. Thank you. And I look forward to the rest. Shields high. Ryan, thank you so much. Welcome to Team Buck. And uh, Ryan actually wrote in on instagram so i will occasionally be able to pull instagram uh but then we got fernando who says buck that beard is in between is in the in-between phase needs to be a bit longer patience my friend but the swoop always looks good best hair on tv baby fernando again thanks for writing and if you all want to follow me on instagram i do post the occasional Tulu photo Tallulah, the french bulldog who's adorable and i also will put uh some political insights in my instagram story throughout the day so you can uh, follow me there. It's uh, just Buck Sexton on Instagram. 
and I'll get more nice messages there because right now I've got a lot of a lot of crazy libs coming at me on Instagram, sending me messages. I hate you and your stupid face and blah blah blah. Such losers. Find something to do, libs. Get a job, libs. That's going to be it for today, team. Thank you, as always, for being here. Please pass the buck. Tell somebody about the show. Back with you tomorrow. Same time and place. Shields high.